Oh, Nicholas. I'm glad you're back. I thought we might venture out this evening, have dinner in town. Uh, actually, I, th I think tonight would be a good night if we stay in. There's something that, that we need to discuss. Well, is something wrong? No, no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I hope you will agree. I found a place in Port Charles, and I'm moving out. I'm moving out. To... I found a place in town with enough acreage to build a corral for Sheba. You should expect a call from the realtor. Uh, I gave her your number. Good. And when she calls, I will apologize for any inconvenience and inform her that you have had a change of heart and realize that you already have a home here at Windermere. And this is where you will stay. I want to live in the real world, okay? Now that I'm not the prince, uh, there's no reason I shouldn't. Nicholas, just because you're not the prince doesn't mean you're without responsibilities. <sighs> you, you raised me to be responsible. I'm not going to turn my back on that. Wasn't there a time when you wanted to see what life was like without all the servants? Huh? Don't I deserve to see what that's like? And don't use Helena. I know she's, she's out there, but I refuse to live my life in, in fear on some guarded island anymore. I'm not moving to another continent. It's just to poor Charles. Could be a lot worse. Now may I speak? If the arguments you raise were the only ones, I might agree. But the fact that you have purposefully omitted the real reason concerns me. This isn't about your learning independence. This is about accommodating your affair with Catherine. You've made your, your objections to my relationship with Catherine very clear. Okay, but who, but who I see is my decision. It's like moving out is my decision. You are wrong to think that I'm doing this because of Catherine, okay? I've seen how lucky he lives. I've seen the freedom that he has. I want to try that. Nicholas, you are not lucky Spencer. You face other demands, other dangers, which require a certain degree of protection. You have been protecting me my entire life. But in doing that, you've, you've, you've crossed the line sometimes into, into controlling. When I was the prince, that had its justifications, but that's over, okay? I am going to do this. Have you considered that I might miss you? That after living so many years as uncle and nephew, I might like some more time to live as father and son? I love being your son, okay? I'm not leaving because of anger. I'm not even going to college. When I, when I walked in here, I didn't, I didn't expect you to be happy about this. But I'm going to do it. It's time. And in no way does this have anything to do with how much I love you or how much I respect you, okay? Attorney said we both have to sign this. Why? So the government will know that Ruby left Kelly's to us. And so they can, what, tax us within an inch of our daily specials. <laughs> we didn't mention that part. They don't ever mention that part, do they? Okay, anything else? You want to tell me where you've been for the last few days? Switzerland. I had some personal banking business to take care of. Oh. Is that a nice way of saying you uh, embezzled more money from the Cassidines? Uh, no. It's a nice way of saying don't ask me any more questions. Okay. I'm not going to pass judgment on you, Luke. But after the way Laura and Stefan have behaved, I wouldn't blame you for wanting to get back at them. 
I ran into Laura in the park the other day with Stefan, and she told me the two of you were separated. Was that what she called it? Yeah. Then I guess that's what we are. Well, I can't say I was surprised, because I know you haven't been living together for a while. She told me her side of it. And at first, I was very sympathetic. But then, the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. There's no point in that, Barbara Jean. Not anymore. Well, I never said you were an angel, but she certainly hasn't made it easy for you. It takes two people to fall in love. It takes two people to fall out of love. I've blamed Laura. I've blamed myself. And I'm just through. I'm done. I don't want to blame anybody, and I don't want to look back. And I don't think she does either. Okay. Well, I know you tend to hold things inside, and I'm not going to push. But if you need me, I'm here. I'm fine. Thanks. I've spent a lot of time and energy trying to bring down the Cassidines, Barbara. A lot of time. And I've done some damage I'm proud of. A couple of times I almost brought the damn clan down. But they're still here. And frankly, my army's defected. Some of them are even bunking down with the enemy. So. I may pick up this war again sometime, but for now, I'm on leave. Besides, the playing field's getting kind of crowded, I think. I understand there are others taking on the task. You mean Jerry? He told you? Actually, he said that Alexis and Jax were taking on the Cassidines, and Jax wanted him to be a part of it. And I told him I thought he was making a big mistake. Good advice. Why didn't he take it? Because he loves his brother. And they've been estranged for a while, and I think Jerry sees this as a way to reconnect. If he wants to get close to his brother, tell him to go on a camping trip and bring a small tent. A uh, war zone is nowhere for a, a family reunion, believe me. <laughs> and besides, I don't think those boys are up to the task, frankly. Morning. Luke. I won't ask if you're talking about me, because obviously you were. Anyone want to fill me in? You know, people who worry about what other folks are thinking about them usually have something to hide. I don't. Not from Bobby. Does she know that you were working for Stefan Cassidy? Care to answer that? Yeah, he told me. Good move. So are we through now, or would you uh, like to grill her about my overdue library books? Look, you want to take on the Cassadines? Be my guest. It's a sometimes entertaining, if dangerous, sideline. But if my sister gets hurt in the process, you take on me next. I love you. Yeah, be careful. <sighs> hey, everything cool? so far. Good. Although, I could use a favor. Sure, name it. Well, remember how you suggested that I take a room upstairs? Yeah. Is that offer still open? What changed your mind? Well, when I first started working here, I wasn't sure it would stick. It was the first regular job that I'd had in a really long time. So I held on to my old dresses, my old address book, my old place on Cortland Street. But I don't think I need them anymore. Great. We're lucky to have you, baby. And so are the customers. Thanks, Lou. Well, I'll talk to Bobby. I'm sure she won't have any problems. Just pick whatever room you want. <laughs> Thanks. That's really generous of you. Well, I wish I could be more generous. We owe you a lot for taking this place off our hands. I mean it. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Hey, hey. moving day. 
put down your stuff and I'll help you with the rest of it. No, this is it. And even I don't travel that light. Well, what can I tell you? There's something about a Cortland Street wardrobe that doesn't quite fly at Kelly's. After I went through everything, this is all that was left. What are you doing here? Cooking. No, he's kidding. Kidding. You know, there are places in the world where people line up to die for my free holy But not coffee. here. No one's dying here, right, boss? Oh my God, I can't leave this place alone for a second. Did you make this? No, I, I didn't make it. Look, what I meant... It smells fine. Okay, good. What I meant by cooking is that I cranked the heat way up upstairs so that, you know, when you got here and you unpacked, you wouldn't turn into a popsicle. So if you want to go do that, I will take care of these yellow-bellied, taste-budless customers who came in here for breakfast. Bland. No, no, actually, it's better when the customers stay. I will unpack later. You know, I have you know that in South America, they've written songs about my culinary skills. I don't doubt that. Jeez. Aha. It's a waste of time. Watch the master. Well, look who's here. Natasha and Lurch. Did you miss me? Miss you? Yes, I missed you. And I also like my root canals without Novocaine. I thought maybe you were in the, you know, some club med somewhere playing Who's Got the Wombat. Did you bring me a t-shirt or a ice cream cone or a Helena's head on a stick or anything? A brush a question. A question? How's Gomez? <laughs> Was ist los, meine Schöne? Where is he? He's not here, but he should return this evening. Tell him I'll be back. And I expect a report that his work is complete. it would be in more. Want to trade? <laughs> Sorry if it still smells like paint. No, it doesn't. Not at all. Oh, wow. Look at that light. Oh, and the trees as you're driving up in a couple of weeks, they're going to be in full bud. It's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> well, I'm glad you approve. At least uh, one of my parents is on my side. The other one may come around. A good word would help, you know. I'm seeing him tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Stefan is taking me to the opera. Opening night. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe that silly grin off your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This is really crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? I think it's great. I mean, it's about time my parents went out on a date. An official one. Hmm. In the public. While well, the society cameras are poised. Oh, please. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> Finally wore you down, huh? I think he's been very patient. Well, his patience can wear down Mount Everest. Mm. Oh, stop grinning and oh, what? open up your housewarming <laughs> gift, all right? Here, this one's for me. Okay. This is from Foster. Foster. <laughs> and this is from Leslie Lou. Uh -oh. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cute? Yes. <laughs> this is perfect, thank you. You didn't have one already, did you? No, no. But I am going to use this against you. 
I'm going to tell my father that you were so supportive and you were, you were helping me set up my house. And... Uh, well, do me a favor and wait until tomorrow, would you? Because uh, then all the society pages will be yapping that we seem a little miffed with each other. <laughs> this is great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nicholas? Yeah? About Helena? <laughs> I'm not going to live my life in, in fear of her anymore. So, to that end, I did something different. Uh, I suggested that it would be better if the two of us worked together rather than against each other. On what? Protecting the estate. Oh. Does Stefan know that you did that? Uh, well, between the people that he has following Helena and the people he has following me, probably. Nicholas, you have to tell him. I know. I will. Well, I've got to go. I have an appointment. But, Nicholas, please be careful, will you? Hold on, hold on. I have a gift for you, too. Oh. Now, you may have seen these before. They've been in the family for years. No, I haven't. Oh, my goodness. They're beautiful. Oh, Nicholas, this has to be a loan, not a gift. No, no, no. See, if this were a loan, then I might end up being dragged back to the opera, which you may enjoy. But the last time I went, I was so bored that I had a near-death experience. Oh, stop. <laughs> no, I swear, I saw the white light and everything. <laughs> <Nicholas>. <laughs> Please, just accept them. I mean, you can count how many people are snoring in the audience. Oh, wait, wait, you're seeing, uh, is it Carmen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one has good sword play, so. Thank you. That's, that's very sweet of you. <sighs> All right, well... Please, call me if you need anything. Yeah, I will. I will. And thanks for the, the call for me. Oh, you're great. welcome. <laughs> there you go. Bye-bye. Have fun tonight. And you want me to tell you? If Elena wanted to whack somebody, how she'd do it? In Greece. Who would she hire? It depends. What are the details? Elena's trying to pull something, and I don't know what it is. Now, she has a connection to the doctor that delivered Nicholas. That makes me suspicious. I want to find out what's going on. So I call him up. He doesn't want to talk to me. So we fly to Athens. And on the jet, I call him, neglecting to tell him that we are an hour away and he's going to have guests. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't tell me anymore. You get there, and Riga Mortis is in the waiting room. Deader than a door now. <sighs> Was he twitching when you were, you know, on the phone? He said he didn't have anything to tell me, and he hung up. Okay. Was he alone when you found him? His secretary was in the outer office, but she didn't see or hear anything. Coroner said it was a massive heart attack. And the autopsy was done overnight, and there was no evidence of a struggle, no evidence of any foul play, no evidence at all. So we go back there the next day, and the whole place is cleaned out. He calls the police inspector, and he says, unlike America, we do things at a much faster pace uh -huh. here. And, oh, by the way, would you like us to escort you to the airport? Uh, that's how they treat me. Concerning who Elena might have hired, uh, can you help us out with the name or not? Well, I don't know. Why do you uh, want to know these things? I mean, you know who did it, and... Uh, wait a minute. The only reason that you might be interested would be... That perhaps this fellow has something of yours? He's got something you want? Hey, don't walk away. We're just getting to the important part here. Okay. Right after we found Dr. Listeris, he distracted the secretary. I went back in there, I snooped around, and I found a folder in a very obscure place. But the police came, so I had to leave it. And it disappeared. Did the cops take her with them? Maybe. More likely, our arrival interrupted whoever killed the steerus. They didn't find the file in time, but they came back that night to get it. What's in the folder? I, I couldn't see fast enough. I just saw the label, and it said Nicholas Cassidine, so it may have something to do with my inheritance. I want that file. Well, OK, here's uh, the way I, <laughs> I see it. You're dreaming. Elena saw you coming. And probably that phone call you made from the jet 
to the doctor, signed his death warrant. Do you think she has the file? Well, that brings us to the most interesting question. What's in it? I mean, I'm not being supportive. I hate that. I hate that expression, by the way. I hate self-esteem, and I hate it when people say the bottom line is. What does that mean? What I, is your point? I don't remember you go on so long. I thought you wanted me to get my share of the inheritance. Of course I do, babe. You know that. I'd be happy if you walked away with the whole bucket of baklava. Then tell me who killed the doctor because he knows something. He doesn't know anything anymore. He's dead. Okay? And Helena's got your file. Yes, but he's a hired gun, which means if she could buy him, then so could we. These men aren't exactly loyal. I'm not going to end up with anything unless I stay ahead of Helena and Stefan. I have to know ten times more than they do. Uh-huh. We'll pay. Gee, when you put it that way, what can I say? No. I thought so. Let's go. You don't think Elena would have done it herself, do you? Was his throat slit? Was he poisoned? Were his guts ripped out? Helena didn't do it. If Helena's gonna dirty her own hands, she's gonna make a point of it. But now that you've gotten close and she knows about it, she may make a point of it. So watch your throat. And you, watch your guts. Guilt by association. Hey, look, Spencer isn't the only uh, authority on mercenaries. You're right. Quiet. You know, it's safe for you to take a break. Go unpack. I'll watch things. I mean, I won't even, I won't even, you know, pour coffee or anything. I'll just tell people, here it is, serve yourself. No, I don't even want you pouring water. What can I do to water? I don't know, but I don't want to take a chance. Jeez. I, um, ran into your wife the other day, and I, um, uh, filled her in on Lucas and how much I want to see him. And uh, she's agreed to become a character witness for me. And I just thought you should know so that this doesn't come out of left field and cause any trouble. Tony. Yeah? You've got to know that I don't want to talk about this. This is a very bad topic for me. So you must want to cause trouble. I don't want to have a fight. I swear, I just want to have peace. shorter commute tonight. <laughs> yeah. In case I didn't tell you, boss, I love the apartment. In fact, the whole neighborhood's kind of growing on me. Yeah, it'll do that. That's why I spend so much time down here. Yeah. Still, you know, there's no place like home. Toto just wanders through here? Or are you about to step over a line? No. Met your wife the other day, that's all. I thought she was very nice. She seemed very anxious to hear any little bit of news about you. Tammy, sweetheart. Mm. persuade me to give my approval. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. What about Catherine Bell? Now, that's why Nicholas is asserting himself and moving out. I thought that was over. No. Now do you understand? Well, not that I approve of that, not by a long shot, but his living at Windermere did not act as a deterrent to that affair, did it? I'm not sure that anything can once a man is 
made up his mind? I would like to table this discussion until any other night but this one. And we still have plenty of time before curtain, but perhaps we should be going. Oh, no. I forgot the opera glasses. I left them at Windermere. Do we have time to go back? Whatever you like. Mm. Look at the moon. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. done. I don't have the file. I know. But now you have. so beautiful. Let me look at you. <laughs> yes. so beautiful. Let me look at you. <laughs> yes. Sorry. If you'd prefer to go back, not go to the opera, I would understand. No. I'm going. Forgotten. Bizet died the same year Carmen was first performed. Really? He was 36 years of age. <laughs> the composer, when, when he died. Uh huh. Is there a joke page in your program? I don't seem to find one online. <laughs> <of mine. laughs> May I say, no one has ever found me so amusing. <laughs> or amusing in the slightest, for that matter. <laughs> oh, 
Where did you find those? Nicholas lost a pair like that just last year. Oh, is that what he told you? Let me see uh, those. Did he tape something to the uh, lenses? Oh, stop it, stop it. No, people are looking. Don't do that. Well, what don't, am I doing? I'm reading my program. <laughs> what is so funny? I'm sorry. What? I can't stop thinking about what Nicholas told me about you dragging him to the opera. <laughs> so... I'm sure he never said anything of the kind. <laughs> He said he was so bored, he had a near-death experience. At Aida? <laughs> That's impossible. What? You think it was true? He was really bored? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that probably most teenage boys would feel obligated to roll their eyes at opera. And it's, you know, probably true that he wouldn't have gone without you. Unless I had forced him to go. No, I wouldn't say that. It, you know, maybe it just was easier with somebody like you, you know? You're sort of an operatic character yourself. Why? I can't sing a note. Hey, what's up? Are we on fire? Is that my reputation, the torch man coming? You don't show your face around here much. I came by last week, Claude said that you were on a, on a business trip. Yeah, actually, a nobody's business trip. Oh. Uh, the reason I've been scarce is, uh... Marino's been making life miserable. Yeah, I figured. It's driving Jason nuts not knowing when and where he's gonna strike. I don't think it's gonna be here, but if you see extra muscle hanging around at night, that belongs to me. Great. Big cement face bruisers and suits. That's always real good for business. You're not thinking half of this is yours, because this ain't club money. It's a little, uh, private stash. From your, uh, nobody's business trip? Correct. Anyway, uh, it's Jason and me. Marino's after. I don't, I don't think his site's gonna be in the club, um, if we're not around. But then again, we weren't at the, uh, warehouse when it burned down. We've always said, you and me, that if anything ever got uncomfortable, you can buy me out anytime. Why would I want to do that? You know, maybe I'd like to take something into the next century besides a toothbrush. What? You don't use a toothbrush longer than six months, do you? Yeah, sometimes a year. If I'm feeling real lucky, I don't even floss. Ah, uh, 50s, 20s. Salud. Prost. So, man, this is how it is between us now, huh? You, uh, uh stick your head in the door only to say, I can buy you out. What's really up? When we went into business together, you 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 were expecting a legitimate partner. <laughs> I never believed it. Besides, you told me yeah. the coffee warehouse was legit. That's all I need to know. And where is that now? Up in ashes. Because Marino is a pest and I need pest repellent, if you know what I'm saying. So you're gonna let one little uh, warehouse fire pull you into a life of crime? What if to keep the warehouse standing, he has to be removed? Do it. You know what they say about a vacuum? 
So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna hear some sucking sound and suddenly you're standing in Marina's shoes? I don't see any other way to go. Can I get another drink? Well, if there's no other way to go, go that way. I mean, it's not such a bad idea after all, is it? Of course, you could just say no. Yeah, I can, I can say no and walk away and I can do the things that I've done. But, the old ties are still there. You can break your word, but you can't break those. was magnificent. The music, the spectacle, the passion, the sacrifice. Well, opera strikes some people. Our son among them, apparently, as unrealistic. <laughs> but it isn't. I mean, I've felt all of those things. Who hasn't? It's just that here they make it look and sound as important as it feels inside. I loved it. Thank you for bringing me. The pleasure was all mine. Uh, you know, son, you're about a, as good a friend as a man could have. You're loyal, smart, good company. No judgments. But you know what your problem is? I try to keep that to myself. Your problem is you're a sucker for fate. It's like, since you were five years old, you've been walking around feeling doomed. You know, you, you, you're like some depressed character in an old <laughs> Viking movie, man. Really, you hear thunder and, and you think the gods are angry with me instead of where did I put my umbrella? You think that I would give up a perfect partnership because Marino ain't through with you? The hell with Marino. You know, some people, unlike you and me, can actually move on. You, you know why you think you can't walk away? Because you never have, man. And your advice would be? You want to walk away, you can do it. You want to make a break, you can do it. You just have to empty your pockets, empty your head, and take nothing with you except your comb and your driver's license. Thanks for your advice. Don't don't forget the toothbrush. strange, isn't it? We have a child together, and yet here we are on our first date. <laughs> um, would you like to come inside for a few minutes for a cup of coffee or uh, cognac? Um. Are you all right? What's the matter? I'm... I'm 
trying to decide if this is the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> and why it should come to me now in this place, on this porch. So, Lucas Lorenzo, what's out there? Maybe we should stay out of this. Well, should? Well, yeah, of course we should, but you know, Tammy, if you're really Alan's friend... Stay out of what? Oh, jeez, girlfriend, are you trying <laughs> to give us a heart attack? Hey, can't you see? We're plotting. Without me. <laughs> Alan Quartermain spent last night upstairs in Tammy's room. He was helping me get moved in, and he fell asleep on my couch. It was completely innocent. Well, yeah, but that's not how it looked to Monica when she knocked on Tammy's door this morning. Oh, I get it. So what's the salvage plan? Okay, so I call Alan. I tell him I did something awful to my ankle. And I called Monica, and I told her that Luke burned himself something awful in the kitchen. Oh, so they're both showing up for a medical rescue. Didn't <laughs> Monica call you and say, Bobby, you're a nurse. Is it really that bad? Oh, please. Doctors don't ask nurses for advice. Oh, okay. Mm. So then they both show up, they come to blows, they break some dishes, and then they both still realize they're madly in love with each other. Wait a second. Nobody here said anything about breaking dishes. <laughs> well... I think it's virtually foolproof. Mm. See, I told you. Alan and Monica are meant to be. And we know this because... They really need to hate each other in order to break up the monotony. This will work. Trust me. Felicia, have I ever been wrong? Okay, okay, okay. But this will work. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, Monica, thank goodness you're here. Your brother must be the only man on earth that requires a cardiologist to treat a burn. Hi, Felicia. Hi. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, you know, he won't go to GH, and you are the only doctor he respects. Luke respects me since when? Well, I think he's scared of you. <laughs> oh. What? 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 And then the next thing I knew, Luke was falling, and his entire right arm just plunged right into the fryer, and oh, God, it was horrible. Well, I'm sure it, it was, but uh, why don't you explain it to me while I'm examining him? Oh, uh, well, I brought him upstairs, you know, to lie down, and uh, unless he took off by way of the fire escape, that's where he is, upstairs. Okay, well, where upstairs? Uh, third door on the right. Tammy's room? Monica. Now, Monica, don't be childish, okay? Luke is in there in his arm. You know, it's really right, hurting. I mean, it could right, get infected. Right. Okay, now hurry up, okay? Yes, okay, I am. Okay, I am. I know you're rushed, but I'm going to take a while to get here. All right. <gasps> Alan! Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Luke? Luke? Tammy is in so much pain. She's upstairs. Okay. She's waiting for you upstairs. Right. Oh, I feel so bad for her. Right. Come, she come, really needs to. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. I'm I'm Thank you. I'm going. I'm going. Hey, come on. Hurry up, please. Come on. 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 Come
Alan and Tammy? Only in Monica's mind. You think uh, Monica, like, might want to get even? <laughs> hmm. You know, she's never come on to me. What was she thinking? I don't know. <laughs> Did I hurt you at all? Mm -mm. Women tackle me all the time. Except Monica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Monica says that she's through with Alan, so Bobby locks him in a room together? Mm -hmm. Only my sister would think of something so insane. No, actually, you all would. Who all? When a man sees something crawling towards a terrible end, gasping for breath, with no hope in sight, what does he want to do? He wants to put a bullet in its head. What does a woman want to do? She wants to hook it up to machines. She wants to feed it intravenously. She wants to read it romantic novels and it, it make that excruciating agony last as long as possible. Not all women. Really? Well, if there's a female Kevorkian out there when it comes to marriage, I'd like to meet her. I might even like to marry her. Oh, that's too bad. I'm already married. You don't really think I'm going to believe you're a cynic, do you? Not with a face like yours. You're not that superficial. And neither am I. Sometimes a marriage can't be saved. No matter how much you love, no matter how much effort you put into it, no matter how certain you were that it would never end, sometimes it just does. That's what happened to me when I realized that Frisco loved me, but he loved his job more. What did you do? I let go of the marriage while there were still good things to remember. Sometimes love doesn't last, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't real. You just have to keep that image in your head of what it looks like and see the road ahead of you. You know what I find interesting? You and I have lived in the same town, on and off, for a long time. But there's a lot I don't know about you. <laughs> well, people take one look at me and they think that they know me inside and out. But you know, they really don't. You know, I'll bet that's true. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Mm -hmm. hey, I'm just trying to have a conversation here. I'm not trying to get on No, 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 it's not you. It's the cigar. My cigar? Really, I'll have you know that this comes a special blend from the finest tobacconist in Europe. You go all the way to Europe for cigars? Yeah, Cuba's closed. <laughs> I was there recently, and uh, I ran into a gentleman, very refined taste, and he directed me to this tobacconist. I thought it was kind of nice, but if it bothers you, I don't mind putting it out. Oh. Well, I guess it reminds me of something. Something I must not want to be reminded of. <laughs> <laughs>